From Church Militant Studios, this is the Church Militant Evening News. Hello and thank you for joining us this Friday, March 10th. I'm James Fidua along with Kim Tizer here with Catholic News and Context. Tonight, Church Militant Resistance gearing up to do what they do best, resist. All eyes in the Catholic world are on Germany as the Synodal Way comes to a close and brave bishops in Africa dare to challenge the state. And leading us off tonight, let's go over to Cleveland, Ohio, where pro-lifers from miles around are gathering at the annual Bringing America Back to Life Conference, or Babel. And here with us tonight on the ground at Babel, uh, at the Babel Conference, is Christine Chrisley to tell us what she's seeing. Christine, great to see you. So what exactly is Babel? Well, it started out as a, as a symposium 14 years ago, a pro-life symposium, bringing America back to life, um, the, the whole life initiative. But for the last 12 years, that symposium has been in Cleveland and it's grown into this, an amazing gathering of pro-life people and, and related issues. So what will people see there, Kay, when they attend this weekend? Uh, are, are there some speakers uh, that they'll listen to? Yes, uh, there is a, an amazing array of speakers. Uh, people from, everybody from uh, Kristen Hawkins, you know, who's head of Students for Life. Jack Posobiec, he's going to be here. Austin Ruse, who is a watchdog over the United Nations. Um, you know, and of course our very own Michael Voris is one of the featured speakers. He'll be speaking tomorrow. So, um, you know, it, a lot of people are here for these speakers to be inspired to to find out what is the latest in the pro-life movement and what people are doing going forward so that's why they're here Christine I'm seeing a lot of uh, booths and tables and signs behind you who who's showing up to this thing or some of these groups that are coming yeah there um, so there's everything from the Shroud of Turin to, um, you know, uh, Catholic life insurance to <laughs> vitamin kind of things to, you know, rosaries. And then, you know, very, very high level things to, I don't mean to diminish those, but, you know, uh, the Thomas More Society is here. Yes. The um, G.K. Chesterton uh, Academy Network is here. A person, the person, the National Personhood Organization is, has representatives here. So it really is kind of a um, lots of different kind. The uh, Lutherans for Life, Greek Orthodox for Life. So it's wow. it's a very interesting group. Yeah. Well, Kate, we only have probably about a minute left or so, but tell us, have you detected any kind of theme there for this weekend, uh, especially among the speakers and what they're talking about? You know, one thing I would uh, that I I would just start out with as sort of foundational is this particular Babel. It's so it has 1,100 people here. It's sold out very early, and so I'm saying that to say there's a great deal of enthusiasm, lots of energy in this conference. So people are not beat down. They're very enthusiastic about the future. They're looking for ways to go on the offense and not be constantly on the defense. So I, I think there's very good energy here. Lots Absolutely. of young people. That's good, and we always like to see that, Kay. Thank you very much uh, for coming on and talking with us, Kay, and uh, we will see you next week when you guys are back. Hey, we'll see you then. God bless, Kay. Yeah. Bye. Well, 11,000 people, that's, that's, that's a pretty good showing for that conference. It is, and young people too, so that's good to hear as well. Yeah, that's awesome. And when that was uh, 1,100 1, attendees. Yes. Oh, yes, thank you, Kim, mm -hmm. 1,100. A Catholic group is revealing a significant number of seminarians and priests are using hookup apps for casual sex. Catholic Laity and Clergy for Renewal, who spent $4 million tracking clergy using apps like Grinder, Scruff, Jacked, and OkCupid, was behind the outing of Monsignor Jeffrey Burrell in 2021. 
At the time, Burrell was General Secretary of the U.S. Bishops Conference. This week, Catholic Lady and Clergy for Renewal President J Jade Hendricks wrote in First Things, as we analyzed the data, it became clear that heterosexual and homosexual hookup apps were used by some seminarians and some priests in some places, and with volumes and patterns suggesting those were not isolated moral lapses by individuals. Hendricks added, quote, it should be noted that these sorts of hookup apps are designed specifically for casual anonymous sexual encounters. And Dr. Jules Gomez joins us tonight with more. Hello, Jules. Hello, Kim. Good evening. Good evening. You know, I'm so sorry that we're together again to discuss this particular topic. But, you know, it is a good thing that Henrik's exposed this problem in the First Things article. It seems to be more widespread than most of us realize. But why didn't he out the priests living double lives like what happened with Burl? Well, uh, it's, it's a bit complicated. Uh, this was supposed to be a hush, hush affair. What uh, Hendrix was doing, Hendrix and his team conducting these investigations, analyzing the data, and rather naively, if I may say so, handing over the findings to the bishops so the bishops could do whatever. Uh, you, we know what they did with Burrell, reinstated him. But the Washington Post got hold of this and broke the story. And that is why uh, Hendrix was compelled uh, rather than, you know, they asked him for a comment and uh, he said uh, he was going to think about it. And then he preempted the Washington Post story by explaining himself in first things. Well, when Burrell was outed, if you recall, there was a significant amount of backlash about a priest's right to privacy. So what has been the reaction to this story? Well, uh, it's been a, a tidal wave of abuse against Hendricks and his organization. So, for example, the National Catholic Reporter, which is a very heterodox and left wing, are basically comparing uh, this investigation to the Salem witch trials. <laughs> and they're calling uh, this faithful Catholic organization, the Stasi and the KGB, and all the names you can think of, uh, even calling them creeps. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, the, the whole argument is uh, privacy, as you rightly said, uh, and as long as the priests are not doing anything criminal by using grinders, so what? Now, the problem is, uh, as we've pointed out in our print story today, a number of priests have been arrested and jailed for actually doing criminal things with grinders. So, for example, in 2021, Father Robert McWilliams from the Diocese of Cleveland was arrested for seducing a 15-year-old boy. He's committed suicide recently. In November 2022, uh, Father Yannick uh, uh, Ballion, he was uh, again arrested in France for seducing and, and drugging through grinder another 15 year old boy. So there is a lot of criminal stuff going on with these apps. Yes, and that is absolutely horrible. And, and you would think even if crimes weren't being committed, we would be more concerned with having holy priests and weeding out those who aren't going to, to serve the Lord's flock. Well, thank you so much once again, Dr. Jules Gomez for being with us. And I hope you have a blessed weekend. Thank you, Kim. All right. Turning to East Africa, where bishops are appealing to their Supreme Court to defend Christian family values. In a statement today, the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops asked the court to overturn a recent ruling that now permits the registration of LGBT lobby groups. The statement noted LGBT ideology destroys life, declaring it is an attack on humanity. This ideology is an attempt to undermine the family and cultural values which are rooted in the very nature of humankind. Catholic priests who bless homosexual unions in Germany will no longer face disciplinary consequences. On Friday, Germany's synodal way voted to bless same-sex couples and permit women preachers during mass. Civilly remarried divorcees will also be able to have their relationship blessed by the Catholic Church. 
The Synodal Way meeting began with what faithful Catholics described as a satanic dance in Frankfurt Cathedral. Essence Bishop Franz Joseph Overbeck snubbed African Catholic rep representatives in Germany who objected to the radical innovation. Overbeck remarked, I consider us as a universal church to be so interculturally diverse that we have to say at this point that we have to answer it differently in our country than elsewhere. And as we conclude this week and gear up for Germany's Synodal Path conclusion this weekend, let's bring on Dr. William Mahoney one last time to discuss some of the bishops and clergy who are speaking out against this Synodal Way. Doctor, good to Thanks see you. Thanks for having me, and I'm glad we're almost done talking about this. Me too. <laughs> you, you and me both there. Uh, so but uh, so. Thankfully, this, uh, this Synodal Way has not gone uh, uncondemned by no. the Vatican, as we've said yesterday, and other bishops from around the world. So who are they? Well, for example, uh, Vilki is a, a one, one he's, he's excellent. He's spoken very strongly against them. Another is Reinhardt, uh, sorry, um, uh, Muller, yeah, Archbishop Muller. He's, uh, um, no, sorry, Cardinal Muller. He's, he's been excellent. He's, um, I don't know, like, when his younger years, but in, in recent years, he's just been, like, very, very orthodox. He's been saying mm -hmm. solid things. He's really been coming out in favor of very orthodox Catholicism. And he's completely blasted the Synodal Way for all the reasons we mentioned earlier. It was the same as Ladaria and w Ouellette and, you know, Pope Francis. Uh, just they're, they're just going down a, a really terrible path, you know. They're trying to do something like animal farm you know you know animal farm and the yeah. there's a, the animals overthrow the farm and then the the pigs take over and then there's a set of rules they live by and then they just keep changing the rules adjusting them a little changing it to fit their whims to you know feed their desires and their lusts and it's just it, it's a circus right and that's yeah. what the german synodal way is trying to do and maybe perhaps it's fitting that the analogy there was with you know pigs because that's 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 what they're really acting like right now. <laughs> there you go, yeah. Uh, how, how important do you think it is, because it seems like the, the Synodal Way shows uh, no signs of stopping at this point, how important is it for bishops, priests, anybody and everybody to speak out against this because it, it again, it, it doesn't seem like the Vatican, who really, like we said yesterday, has the power to stop this, it doesn't really seem like they're doing anything. Yeah, I mean, it's extremely important. There was one letter that was had 70 signatories on it, of prelates and clergy, mm -hmm. and two, uh, two of them on our know Rinza was on there, Cardinal Rinza was on there, Cardinal Burke was on there, warning them. So it's extremely important, and you, you, you never stop. St. Paul says to expose works of darkness. This is a work of darkness, yeah. and it needs to be exposed, and you need to keep exposing it, and you need to just keep hammering it and hammering it, because they're not going to stop hammering their wicked message, their, their attempt to utterly destroy the Catholic Church, which is what they're trying to do. They will not succeed ultimately, but they're going to do a lot of damage and, and, and maybe lose some souls in the process. So, of course, you need to speak against that for the for the glory of, of our Lord, for the majesty of his church, his bride, and for the salvation of souls. You never shut up and keep speaking against it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Doctor, it has been a pleasure having you on to talk about this very, very complicated, very, very important topic. Uh, but yeah, we'll wait and see what happens this weekend with this thing. And uh, thank you very much for your expertise. My pleasure. Thank you. God bless. Well, when we come back, turns out pornographic books are okay in the classroom, but nowhere else. And is the Staten Island St. Patrick Parade inclusive or not? We'll let you decide. Stay tuned to all that and more up next. Thank you for watching the first half of Church Milton Evening News. If you would like to watch the rest of today's episode, please click the link in the description and we'll see you at churchmilitant.com. God love you.